Do you wanna protect your family's wealth and all the things that you've worked so hard to acquire? Today, we're gonna to get into the waterfall concept and how you can use that methodology to keep your family wealthy. What is the waterfall concept? So let's get into this now. The waterfall concept involves purchasing whole life insurance policies across multiple generations to keep a continuous flow of wealth. It leverages the cash value accumulation and the death benefits of the whole life insurance to transfer wealth efficiently. The methodology here is to create one policy for one generation, another policy for the next generation, and so on and so forth. And we're going to get into how you do that and how you structure it, what sort of entities should you use to own the whole life insurance to keep that wealth flowing and to keep it out of the hands of Uncle Sam. So first we're gonna look at establishing whole life insurance policies across generations. So generation one is the grandparents, right? You may be generation two, the parents. Generation one purchases and owns insurance on generation two, which is the parents. The parents continue that process purchasing insurance on the next generation. I would take this a step further. If I was looking to create this, as you may be for your own family, you want to start with the eldest generation first. So if you can own life insurance on yourself first and then your children, right, and then have your children buy it on their children and so on and so forth that would be the best way to structure this you may also look to if you can through cash flow have insurance on your parents right maybe they're not in a position to purchase it on you but maybe you can purchase it on them so these are things that you want to start to look at when it comes to your unique family position so let's get into a few numbers here that come from investopedia and the example here for generation one generation one's policy details are buying a million dollar face amount policy on generation two and what they're going to do is fund that with about thirty thousand dollars a year for the next 20 years total premiums that they'll put into the policy around 600,000. But after that 20 year period, the projected cash value inside the plan will be about 800,000. The death benefit will have also been growing across that time. And they're looking at about $1.2 million of death benefit. The benefit here for this policy is the cash grows tax deferred and the death benefits can provide a tax-free lump sum to the beneficiaries. There's additional benefits that can come into this, right? Because you have access to that cash value as it's being deferred, and you can take loans against the policy that are backed up by the death benefit. So you can utilize that cash value while you're alive and still leave a tax-free death benefit. So now let's look at some of the structures that could own the life insurance. Of course, you could own it on your own, right? And you can have successor owners for it, but you can also have an irrevocable life insurance trust own this policy. An islet owns the life insurance policy and that removes it from your taxable estate. So generation one transfers funds to the islet to pay premiums. So what we're talking about here is having this trust which is irrevocable, own the life insurance policy. And the way that the premiums get into the trust to actually purchase it is the, the person gifts those dollars to the trust. There's a tax play there. And depending on the estate tax limits and the gift tax amounts that you can do, you can avoid a lot of your lifetime deductions that you have for estate tax planning purposes. But even if estate taxes aren't an issue, one of the good things about having life insurance owned inside of a trust is it's out of your taxable estate, which means it's not attachable by creditors or predators. Also, you have inside the trust a set of instructions on how that money is to be used and what that trust does with that money so it gives you control long after you're gone so now we'll get into some of the estate tax examples that we we're just talking about right and this comes directly from the irs 
For the taxes in 2023, the estate tax exemption was about $12.9 million per individual. That could be coming down after 2025. We'll see what happens with the new administration. Do they extend some of this stuff or do they bring it back down to say maybe 5 million, 3 million? We're not really sure where that's gonna land. And know that that estate tax is always a moving target. By placing the million dollar policy in an islet, that avoids up to $400,000 in estate taxes. This assumes that the estate tax rate is at the current 40% amount and that that million dollars would have been exceeding your total exemption of $12.9 million. But again, those numbers are going to come down. There are times in the tax code when there was no estate tax. There's also been times when it's been very, very low. So we have to take a look at this. And one of the things that the government needs right now, especially today, is money. And how does the government get money? They get it through taxation. The trust outlines the terms for distributing funds to beneficiaries protecting assets from creditors and mismanagement. That's another thing that we didn't talk about last, but the mismanagement of funds, right? By having the trust, you can ensure that people aren't going to be what's called spendthrift, right? They're, they're not just gonna get this big sum of money and spend it all and blow through the whole inheritance. In fact, if you look at the statistics, most people that inherit money or win the lottery, that money's gone within 18 months. So if you don't want that to happen, you wanna maintain the wealth inside the family and allow it to continue to grow, using some of this trust planning can be very helpful in that. Now let's talk about accessing the cash value. And some of these numbers again come from New York Life. So let's talk about the benefits. The policy cash values can be borrowed against for investment, education, funding, or business ventures, right? Really, you have access to those funds for whatever you're looking to do with them. Loans are tax-free uh, as they're considered debt, not income. But specific to life insurance, it doesn't affect your debt to income ratio. It's also not a loan that you have to qualify for. So these things make it different, but still having that be a debt and not income allows this to be income tax free. It enhances family wealth without liquidating assets, meaning you can access those dollars and you don't have to sell other assets to get money. Interest on the policy loans may be offset by investment gains. So let's go through the, the example that New York Life puts out here. So what they're looking at is 20 years into this policy, you have $800,000 available and you take a $400,000 loan against the policy that policy loan interest rate at five percent and the investment return right so the idea is not just to borrow the money to go on vacation the the idea is to borrow the money to buy other assets and have those other assets return more for you enhancing the family wealth so by doing that the investment rate of return is eight percent in the family business or investment portfolio so the annual investment return on that $400,000 is about 32 grand. The annual loan interest is about $20,000, giving you a net annual gain of $12,000. What this also doesn't bring into account is the fact that that 400,000 continues to compound and grow inside the life insurance policy. So all of these different factors, you can see little by little are helping to enhance the family wealth and you're not liquidating assets. You're not selling stock to go purchase something, right? You're able to continue to invest, continue to grow and use the policy for your family's benefit. Repeat the process for continuous wealth transfer. The generation two uses the death benefit received from generation one's policy to fund new policies, ensuring generation three. The cycle continues and a perpetual wealth transfer mechanism is created. So we'll get into a little deeper example here, right? So now generation two receives a $1.2 million death benefit. They allocate 600,000 or half of that money to purchase new whole life insurances on generation three with a face amount of $2 million. And annually they'll pay about 40,000 from the funds that they've set aside to fund this policy. The projected cash value after 20 years will be about $1.5 million and the death benefit would have grown to about $2.5 million. 
So each generation is building upon the last and expanding the family's net worth. And this is just in the insurance contract. Imagine the investments that are happening outside of the insurance. Now, if this is something that you're thinking about starting for your own family, what you wanna do is go in the description box, click the link, fill out your information, and one of the team members here at Epic will reach out to you and take you through this success process, helping you identify the areas where you can grow your family wealth, where you can protect it, and the things that you may not be thinking of, such as money coming off your balance sheet and cash flow, right? They can help you find the money to fund these policies. And again, I wanna thank you for watching this video all the way through. Go ahead and click that like button if you found value in it, share it with your friends, and stay tuned for more.